So far what you guys have seen me do is basically just attach parts that belong on the car that are missing. But what I want to do first before I do any more of that is I want to see if I can't get the motor to work. I've given up on the easy stuff like, oh, it just needs the timing set or, oh, it just needs a car rebuild and I'm going to go for, to the basics. So we're going to look at compression and we're going to look at timing and see where we're at on both. But first, I need to spin the car around because if I do get it started, I don't want the exhaust pumping a whole bunch of exhaust into the back of my shop. I want it sticking out that direction. So I have these uh, these little wheel caster things on the car. I've used them once, they work pretty good. I'm gonna try them with this car and see how it goes. Magic, the cars have switched spots. I've yet to have this car inside on concrete. Looking at what's here, it looks like I have a little bit of transmission leak, totally normal. I believe this water is from inside the cabin. I'll go ahead and show that to you. Luckily for me, 1974 had fiberglass floors in it. And if you look, it's just holding a little bit of water. Yeah, I know I need to mop that up, but I'm sure the back storage trays have water in them too and it's slowly leaking. And that's the main reason why seat belts in these kind of cars go bad. Because water collects in the retractors and makes them crappy. Anyway, now that I have this switched, I can clean this side of the garage and then pull the 77 back in here. In order to put this car back together, I gotta go hit the parts room. Check this out guys, I just recently put all this stuff up and organized it, but this is all shelves of C3 Corvette parts. And the best part about this car is I can go to my shelves and pick off all the stuff that I need. For example, I just put headlight bezels on uh, the car that I had and I had, there's these clips in the back that go right there and I had to steal a couple of these. Boom, had the clips, didn't stop me. So this bucket right here is a small pile of all the things that I know I'm going to need. Interior ducts, seat belts, kick panels, antenna, blah blah blah, just a bunch of random stuff. But one thing I need to grab right now is going to be the hood release cable. So here's the hood release cable. The reason why I'm doing this now is because the car has a piece of electrical wire attached to the hinge. And that's Bubba. So I'm going to clean this up and put it in. The one thing that's wrong with the one I have in the car is it's missing the handle. So this one's going to bolt right in and work great. Three bolts later, the new hood release is installed. Isn't that exciting? So now, I'm going to lube it up so it moves really nice, but now I can get rid of this. Hanging over the side. It took me a little while, but I finally got all the spark plugs out. And you know what? They don't look that bad. If you look at them, they're all about like this. See if I can get that to focus. They're just black and sooty. They're not rusted, they're not full of coolant, they're not white, they're not worn down. The one thing about it though is that they're really, they smell a lot like gas. They're, they might be gas fouled and that might be the problem I'm having. So what I'm gonna do is I will, I'm gonna put in a different distributor. I'm gonna put in a tack drive distributor, but um, and then I'm going to put in new spark plug wires because some of these wires fell apart as I pulled them off. Put in new plugs and then see if it will fire. If it doesn't, I'll take all the plugs out again and we'll do a compression test. I'm pretty sure the motor has compression. The reason being is because it doesn't sound like it's a low compression motor. You can usually tell the way the motor turns over how it sounds and if it doesn't have compression or anything like that. I think these are just bad plugs. So I got new plugs and we'll throw them in we'll see what happens. The plugs are all replaced. I'm going to hot wire the distributor with the alternator because I don't trust the wire that's on it right now. I'm getting a popping 
somewhere, and I don't know what that is. I don't know what that noise is. It's like a tick, electrical tick, like sparks arcing somewhere. I just have to find out. Concerned with this rocker arm right here, there's no oil on it at all. All the rest have oil, that one doesn't. When you turn it over, not really much oil pressure coming up. It's also a lot more loose than the other ones. Not really sure what that's about. Maybe that's the ticking noise I hear. I don't know. So I'm going to keep digging deeper into it. Here are the results of the compression test. So this is the driver's side, this is the passenger side. The only really weird one was number five was at 155. I was expecting number six that has the dry uh, rocker arm to be less. But I mean, with the exception of this one, they're all within spec. But here's the thing, it should run. Regardless if there's a number difference between five and seven or whatever, it should run. One thing I did notice after turning the engine over eight times with all the spark plugs out, I didn't get any gas. So either the car is out of gas, which I know it's not, because when I do this, I get nice squirts of gas down the carburetor, or this carburetor is just junk and it needs another one to run. I don't know. I'm happy to know that the compression's good on the engine. It might be a top end issue, it might be a timing issue, it might be a fuel issue. I don't know. We're just going to have to wait and see. But in the meantime, I am going to swap out this distributor with a different one so I can run the uh, TAC cable with it. I might tighten this one down a little bit just because it's kind of wiggly compared to all the rest of them and see if that makes any difference. See if that click goes away. If that's even it, I don't know. The other thing is I turned it over eight times and I didn't really see any oil come up through the uh, push rods. Now that might just be because the engine's not running, but you'd think it would do something. So I can't really check oil pressure because I can't get the motor to run. So I might be wasting my time, I might not be, but we're just going to have to see. Here's the uh, new distributor. This is what they call a TAC drive distributor. It basically has a small little speedo cable that attaches to it, and then that attaches to the TAC inside the car. I got this years ago from a guy named Bert. He, we were trading on some parts and he just gave it to me. Thanks Bert! I'm using the parts that you got me. So this is a new coil and I believe it's a new cap as well. It looks really good inside. And a used but still in good shape uh, rotor for the distributor. So I'm going to go ahead and yank this sucker out just because I, one, it's the wrong one and two, it looks crappy inside. And I'm going to put this one in making sure that I hook up the cable for the tack which is right here. See that? That's what that is. So that goes over that direction like that. Here's an interesting tidbit. So I was going to lube up this, the tack cable and as you can see I did that but if you look at it the end looks kind of chewed up. So I found another tack cable that I had in my parts stash and looking at it, you look at that end, it looks a whole lot better than the one on that end. So here's a trick for you guys. If you need a tack cable, the later Corvettes had two-piece Speedo cables because um, they had cruise control. And that's what this cable is that I'm going to replace. It's part of the cruise control system, but it's exactly the same as the old tack cables. Go figure. So I'm going to lube it up and install it. That way... The tack will work once we get to that point, and there's the distributor installed. Awesome. I tested a spark plug with a spark plug wire, turned the motor over, grounded it to the brake booster, got spark. So I know I have spark, I know my timing's correct, I know I have compression in all eight cylinders. I'm going to pour some gas down the carburetor from an external source, maybe a bad gas, I don't know, and just see if it fires. We'll see. You guys are uh, watching this as I go, so a lot of troubleshooting. Let's see what happens.
All right, we're getting oil everywhere. We got a whole bunch of smoke coming out the back. All right, so it's a carburetor issue. That's the issue. I also need to hook up the ignition to the to the uh, the steering column. All right, so we're getting oil out of everything except for this one. Kind of worried about that one. It was making a lot of noise because I had the valve covers off, but that's okay. You know what? I don't know what the fix was. I don't know if it was ignition. I don't know if it was fuel. I don't know. I don't know what's the fix. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the oil out. Well, maybe, maybe I shouldn't. I don't know because that lifter is still not pumping. Since we got the engine to run and change the oil out, if you look at this oil, I mean it's like super watery. It's it's probably really full of gas. It smells a lot like gas. So, I got 1040, just to make it a little thicker. Just because I have it, I'm going to add a little bit of Marvel Mystery in order to get everything freed up. I'm going to go ahead and change the oil, but I'm also going to look at that push rod that's not oiling as well. I found some good news. So what I did is I turned the motor over until this exhaust valve is moving. That means this intake valve was all the way up. I pulled the uh, rocker arm off and if you look at the top of the valve stem and the rocker arm, I mean yes there will be wear but it's not been chewed up so I feel like this oil problem hasn't been for very long. I don't know. So here is the uh, here's the push rod. It looks really good. What I plan on doing is running a wire down it and making sure it's clear. Making sure that it's not blocked at all. Putting it all back together, running it, and then seeing how it goes. With the push rod tube emptied out, there was crap in it. Was it clogged? I don't know. We will see. Oil is all in. I put that other valve cover on because that side had no oiling issues. I topped off the coolant so that obviously if we're going to run it for an, any long period of time we want water in the motor. It took about a gallon. So the plan is we're going to run it until we see oil come out of there. Probably run it for 20 seconds or so. If there's nothing, shut it off, let it cool down, continue it, and hopefully we can get oil to come out of the rocker arm. There's basically two things. One, it was a clogged push rod. Two, the lifter's dirty and might be eating up the cam but I mean it moves really well just there's no oil so we'll see let's pray that it starts this time ooh that's a lot getting any oil out of it yet. Oh, right.
guys see how smoky it is in here? Woo! Smoky! Wow! Yeah, this car hasn't been running in a long time. But I like the way it's running. The motor is quieted down a lot. Check out how smoky that is. Woo! Looks like the left bank's a little more smoky than the right. If a car is brought to life after 10 years of sitting, it's gonna smoke like this, so. What can I say? Woo! It's alive! It's alive! All right, the rockers are doing really well. Quiet it down a lot. Idle might be a little, idle might be a little high, but that's okay. It ran, it ran. So in my opinion, it's just been sitting for a long time. That's why the valve train was a little noisy on pond startup. I think the Marvel Mystery is going to help. I think new oil will also help, and oil that's not full of gas will also help as well. I'm gonna open the other door. It is, it is uh, smoky in here. So here's the crazy part. I don't know what the fix was. I don't know if it was the distributor. I don't know if it was the timing. I don't know if it was the spark plugs. Um, I don't know if, I, I poured gas down the carburetor before when I tried to start it when it was out on the trailer. That didn't work either, so I don't know. I think next I'm gonna tackle the fuel system, so Take apart the carburetor, at least look at it. Um, it's not starting uh, the way it should. New fuel filter because there's an inline filter. New fuel lines because I have it, why not? And then I'll probably drain the tank and put fresh fuel in it. Just because, I mean, who knows how, long, how old that fuel is that's in it now. Could be really old. So, till next time, it runs. That's awesome.